Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about academic archaeology instead of commercial archaeology because it's the other main route that a lot of people either are thinking of taking or want to take when they're getting into a career in archaeology and I thought I would just kind of give you a brief overview of what it entails in general as a career. While I'm not what I would call an academic archaeologist myself, I have a lot of friends who are pursuing a career in that so I know quite a bit about it and I thought it would just be informative to kind of give you a, a different perspective than maybe your university is giving you about what it is as a career. What's the difference between commercial archaeology and academic archaeology? Uh, the biggest probably difference is that academic positions are usually going to be part of a publicly funded body, so a university or a museum, whereas commercial archaeology is a part of a private company that's associated with a lot of construction and infrastructure projects. An academic archaeologist is what you would typically think of when you're thinking of an archaeologist, such as, you know, perhaps the famous Indiana Jones is a tenured professor at his university in the movies. However, that represents the pinnacle of the career ladder of an academic rather than just, you know, you just want to do archaeology and you end up doing that right away. An academic archaeologist is somebody that's going to be focusing on research, publishing said research, and then also teaching people at a university. In terms of what you're going to need in order to pursue this as a career, first off you're going to have to have an undergraduate degree like most jobs nowadays, and you're going to need to have a like high GPA or uh, in the UK you would say you would have to have like a first or a really high grades in your degree in order to be able to get into grad school. After you have an undergrad you'd be moving on to getting a master's degree. Now this is something that is different in the UK versus the US because in the UK usually an undergraduate can sometimes also include a master's. So instead of just doing your undergraduate and then separating the master's, you do an undergraduate and a master's together. Whereas in the US, you could, you would do your undergraduate and then usually a master's and a PhD are associated together. Uh, and then sometimes you'll have places that have an undergraduate and then you have to go somewhere else for a master's and somewhere else for a PhD. So it's quite fluid where you can get your qualifications or at what time scale. So keep that in mind when you're uh, going to be planning for this. Once you've gotten a master's, which again, you're going to need a relatively high grades or distinction with, you're going to be applying for a PhD. Now you can either go the route of trying to be fully or partly funded or funding your PhD yourself. Uh, unless you are very rich or very sure of the fact that you're going to be making a lot of money once you finish your PhD, I wouldn't necessarily recommend funding it yourself because you're going to be going into a lot of debt. Uh, a partly funded PhD will be somewhere where they will like pay your tuition and then pay you for your like teaching hours that you teach every term. So this is quite common in the US. I have friends who they like only get stuff paid for when they're teaching. So they might actually spend like the fall term not teaching and so they'll have to either make money elsewhere or how, or whatever and then the fall term they're teaching and so on and so forth. A fully funded PhD is exactly like it sounds. Your tuition gets paid for and you get a stipend in order to kind of pay you to do your PhD. And so in that way, it's very much like a job. I have quite a few friends who, again, they have fully funded PhDs with a stipend so they can focus purely on doing their research and work. Uh, the one friend that I have who is currently doing a PhD in Egyptology, her PhD involves not just writing her thesis, but part of the conditions of it is that she has to also work as a curator for a museum. So you can have additional stuff like this tacked on. Here in the UK, a PhD will typically be about three or four years, whereas in the US it's more around five. However, that is just a number and that doesn't mean that you absolutely have to be finished in that time, but you know, it, it, that's the amount of time usually that you'll be having your funding for. So for example, if you have a three-year PhD and you haven't finished your actual thesis by the time that your three years is up, you just won't get any funding, but you're still expected in many ways to finish the project and you're going to have, usually people will have like a 
like a writing year or a write-up year. So they'll do all, a lot of their research and stuff, but say they haven't finished it by the time their funding writes out, runs out, they might apply for more funding from elsewhere or they'll just take the next year or so to just write up their actual thesis. PhD is very, wherever you go, typically in North America and Canada, you'll spend like the first, I think two years, doing a lot of courses and uh, then you have to do your, um, I think they're called comps, I can't remember the word exactly, but essentially you take this big examination where they will examine your knowledge in relation to your subject and if you pass you then get the rest of your time on a PhD to make your actual thesis. So you'll spend the first two years becoming kind of like an expert in what you want to study and then the, uh, the next three years doing your actual research project which comprises the five years of your total PhD. Here in the UK you tend to just spend your entire time working on your project but then you're also going to be teaching but there's no comprehensive exams involved. Throughout a PhD most of the time you are expected to be teaching unless you're doing a specific one like my friend where you, she's actually working in a museum. Once you finished defend and successfully defended your thesis for your PhD you then have to look on to what you're going to be able to do with it and a lot of people nowadays are end up doing what are called postdoctorates or postdocs which will be a research or teaching position at a university that will be about the same length as a PhD probably somewhere around three or four years. You'll be doing a specific project affiliated with that university and likely some teaching at the same time. Once you have a couple postdocs under your belt, you'll probably start to do quite a, uh, trying to get into being a professor or staying permanently at a university rather than having to move around every couple years. And you can't just jump from doing postdocs into a fully like tenure track position usually. You're going to start off as either like a part-time or an associate professor when I, at my undergraduate university, we had like contract professors who weren't permanent staff members, but you know, were expected to take on kind of the same class and workload as somebody who has tenure. And these will be the people that will then, when a tenure track position becomes available, will compete for that position. Tenure is the kind of the magical prize that every academic in general, not just archaeologists, wants to achieve at for their career because having tenure means that you can't really be fired you can't be forced to retire and you're like set and it's going to and it is going to probably be the highest paid position that you're going to be able to get however unfortunately because of the way economics and politics are going nowadays universities are constantly cutting their funding to arts departments and archaeology tenure positions in general are becoming more and more rare and the competition for these positions is fierce. Sorry I just had to turn my bedroom light on because I'm losing my natural light as the sun goes down. First off a lot of the things that people are going to like about getting these positions is the prestige of it. You got to add, you get to add to the doctor to your name and you're going to be recognized within your community and you're going to have a, a reputation for like academic excellence which will appeal to people. The pay in general once you have made it up the ladder is going to be much higher. Also when you're working uh, in the UK and you have like a stipend that is a tax-free stipend. So it might not look maybe as much on paper like you know somebody like myself is making at a basic site assistant rate but because you're not getting taxed and I am you can actually end up making more money than I do per year. Of course tenure positions are paid very well. Additionally somewhere like a PhD and a postdoc is a much longer contract than something that I as a commercial archaeologist am getting at the site assistant level or even at a project officer level where you know you have work for the duration of a project which could be anywhere from like two days to six months to a year you're not going to have to worry so much about where your next uh, paycheck is coming from as somebody who's working uh, at the lowest levels of commercial archaeology. Also a lot of people are just interested in the fact that you get to spend essentially your whole life in school constantly learning and constantly being stimulated and you're also going to have the benefit of the fact that you get to determine what your interests are in terms of your research. Whereas, you know, I can go to a 
site that is in, let's say industrial, I find industrial sites quite boring and I, but I don't really have a choice but to work on it. If I had a choice, I would spend all my time working on cemetery sites with skeletons because that's what I have a master's in. But because I am not a like PhD or anything, I don't really get that choice. However, some of the cons that come with a academic career is the fact that there are just in general fewer jobs and the jobs are more valuable. And as I said before, like the competition for these jobs is like incredibly fierce. Uh, more and more people are getting undergraduate degrees and as undergraduate degrees become the standard, more and more people are getting masters, more and more people are getting PhDs. And all these people that are getting these jobs, they work really hard, they're the top of their class. And it's you, the amount of achievements that you have to have in published papers and recognition is just like it's insane the amount of effort that you have to put in to just compete for a job. In a lot of ways the amount of effort that you put into a PhD you don't see as much reward versus commercial archaeology because there's just less opportunity. So why haven't I personally chosen to go get a PhD and pursue an academic career? Uh, as you know or may know I have an undergraduate and a master's degree which is personally enough for me. An undergraduate degree is enough to get me a job anywhere and I have a specialization and a master's and when it came to kind of deciding if I wanted to pursue an academic career further I wasn't that enthusiastic about it. As I said the these jobs are really really competitive and while I've always had pretty good grades and done well in my courses I'm just not in my opinion, like really smart or motivated enough to do well at a PhD. I feel that I personally would have a hard time um, keeping myself motivated to do a four year long project on like just that one thing. And I'm just not really dedicated enough to keep that up. And I'm also, I don't think competitive enough to really put the full amount of effort that's needed into doing a PhD project. And I personally also really enjoy doing field work. Somebody who has a PhD is going to be spending a lot more time doing teaching and research and publishing throughout the year and then they'll maybe spend about two months doing a field school, running a field school or whatever in the summer. Whereas I prefer doing field work more than I do like research and publishing. I enjoy teaching but that's only one part of doing a PhD. And I personally would prefer to do field work while I'm young and my body can handle the rigors of it better and build up my experience than spend, you know, my time in a university. In archaeology, you're not going to be guaranteed that once you have a PhD, you're automatically going to get a job. And you, and you just and then you've just spent four years of your life on and all of this money on this project and suddenly you can't find a job anywhere because you know every all the postdocs are getting taken by people that are you know better than you and you don't have enough experience archaeologically in field work to really get a good position in commercial so you can get stuck between a bit of a rock and a hard place there and you might have to end up starting from the beginning in a commercial company. I'm not trying to say with this video that you should or shouldn't choose academia. It's really a personal choice and what you prefer. Some people are just naturally better at academic stuff and other people are better at commercial stuff. Both sectors have their own set of issues. I kind of briefly talked about this with commercial archaeology. And archaeology in academia is suffering from, you know, the wider issue of universities constantly cutting funding and also demanding a lot more from their staff without giving them like a larger reward. So it can be, you know, it, it just really depends on what your personal preference is and where you see your life going. And <clears throat> And while these two are kind of like the main routes of what people do with an archaeology degree, that by no means means that if you're not a commercial archaeologist, you have to be an academic archaeologist. There's other routes that you can take as well, which I'm thinking about doing a video about uh, kind of like the fringe careers that you can do with a archaeology degree. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. As per usual, I hope this was helpful and informative for people. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!